first, I wanted to introduce you to our panelists. I was going to actually let them introduce themselves because they are going to do a much better job of introducing themselves than I am. Uh, but I wanted to kind of start with Roger. Roger Dickey, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell them, tell them a little bit about you and what you do here at White Spider. Yeah, absolutely. Hi there, everybody. I'm Roger Dickey. I'm the Vice President of Development here at White Spider. I've been with the company for a decade now and spending that time managing our software developers, overseeing our technical support team, and ultimately delivering our SKU Ninja platform to our customers. So thanks for having me on the session today. Awesome. Thank you, Roger. Natalie, you're probably the newest to the White Spider team. Why don't you tell us a little about uh, 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 bleh. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do here at White Spider, and what you did in the past? Awesome. Well, hi everyone. I'm Natalie. I am Director of Strategy and Insights. I'm on the Client Services team. And what that means is that I work with clients to help them grow their business on walmart.com. Like Brooke mentioned, I am relatively new to the white spider world. I've been here for about four months now. Prior to that, I worked at Edge, which is another essential company, working with clients to grow their business across various retailers. And prior to that, I worked at Walmart e-commerce and I worked with Corey and we were both in the, uh, the home space for walmart.com. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie and Corey. You are no stranger to webinars, but for anybody that hasn't been to a White Spider webinar before, why don't you introduce yourself? What do you do here at White Spider? Yeah, of course. So uh, happy to be back. Uh, seems like I, I was a popular guest on previous uh, episodes. So um, I currently <clears throat> I currently manage the uh, product strategy on the SKU Ninja platform. Um, I'm actually going to be shifting into a new exciting role uh, next year having to do with, um, you know, plugging SKU Ninja into uh, net new platforms. So uh, a lot of really exciting stuff to come on that. But uh, today, just really excited to talk with everyone about uh, all of the really great innovative tools that we've created, um, just really releasing in uh, this past month uh, that we'll be able to dive into during the call. Great. Thank you, Corey. And today we, we want to talk about, you know, just SKU Ninja, how it helps you increase discoverability on walmart.com and just kind of what the value is that SKU Ninja brings and how it can help you as a seller or supplier somewhere on Walmart, because that is obviously the ultimate goal for everybody, um, including Walmart. So, but I wanted to first talk about just kind of the origins of, of SKU Ninja. You know, everyone, we, we say SKU, SKU Ninja, it kind of has a silly name, uh, but I wanted everybody to kind of understand where the origins of the name came from and what it actually was in the past before and just kind of how it's evolved over the years. And so Roger, since you are the father of SKU Ninja, what is SKU Ninja and why was it, it created? Yeah, great question. So uh, yeah, thanks for that title, the father of SKU Ninja. There may be others that might want to claim that title, but I guess for all intents and purposes, I'll take it for now. Um, so you know, SKU Ninja, really uh, trying to put it as simply as possible, it's it's a self-service platform that we've been building for the last several years to help Walmart suppliers find opportunities to improve their product pages, help monitor what their competitors are doing, and ultimately use those insights and tools to improve online and in-store sales. That's amazing. And so when was it created tell us tell us a little bit about yeah. the history walk us through walk us through the history of SKU Ninja. sure there's there's been a lot um and looking back in the history um just of white spiders history but just in the history of the SKU Ninja platform um there's been a lot that's happened and so kind of really the the genesis of where all this uh started to kick off was back in about mid 2016 and it, there were a couple of um, things happening in parallel at White Spider. Um, you know, we're here in Northwest Arkansas, we're in Walmart's backyard, and it's um, always been our goal to connect and, and work with the supplier community as much as possible. And so then back in 2016, um, there was an opportunity to work with Walmart and join what they referred to as their content service provider partnership or the CSP partnership there, um, and which it's now referred to as the Connected Content Partner, or CCP partnership. But um, either way, it's really still the same thing, and it allows 
third parties like ourselves, White Spider, to be able to have more access into the, the back end of Walmart to um, have access to data and functionality that suppliers may not have access to or know what to do with if they did have access, such as improving the quality of content on their Walmart product pages. And when we talk about Walmart, uh, the content, you know, we're really referring to that basics like the title, description, key features and images, and things more advanced through attribution and ultimately into rich media. So really from 2016 on, um, not only did we work to integrate ourselves as a, as a partner with Walmart, but we also started to build tools for ourselves to be able to answer the questions of, you know, what are the deficiencies that our customers, these Walmart suppliers have on their product pages? And how can we bring our expertise from content creation and e-commerce history that we had at White Spider into a tool to help not only um, present the opportunities available to the suppliers, but to also uh, solve those problems for the suppliers. So we really tried to be a one-stop shop um, from content creation all the way through solving the problem for our customers. So that's really kind of where things started back in 2016. And they've just evolved and become more self-service since then. Yeah, I thank you, Roger. I Do you remember, I remember when we first started doing SKU Ninja, it was right after, um, was it Mark Laurie, who uh, what they, they brought on to do the Walmart e-commerce a long time ago, and uh, he had the have it, find it, and display it. And so isn't that kind of where the first, the first inklings of SKU Ninja, didn't it kind of start there with those scores? And then uh, how has it evolved since then? Yeah, yeah, great point. We were really close to to Mark Laurie, um, not only just trying to meet with him as much as possible and, you know, let him know we're here as a resource, but he definitely um, kind of put that mantra out there um, of those key tenants that suppliers really need to focus on from an e-commerce perspective. And there, those three that you mentioned were certainly the ones that we really adhere to, but there were even more beyond that. Um, but those three, the have it, find it, display it um, goals, uh, those were just some, some concepts that we wanted to align ourselves with. So we were speaking the same language. And when we would um, analyze our customer's catalog of Walmart product pages, we could point out those strengths and weaknesses and opportunities um, and speak in that same language. So they could hear it from Walmart and we could present it in the same way that Walmart would want to understand it so that when those suppliers may be having conversations with their buyers, we've given them a little more ammunition to say, hey, we know that our catalog may be lacking in some of these areas. We've identified that and we're working with White Spider to improve upon those things. But ultimately it all, and it's still, um, while they might not still follow the same, those, that same mantra, have it, find it, display it, over at Walmart, there's still fundamental concepts of good e-commerce and great shopper experiences to make sure that your products can be found online and um, transactable. So um, we still follow those processes, even still to this day. Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions. I know uh, Corey and Natalie, since you guys both worked at Walmart, uh, do they still have the it's? I think, Corey, we did a whole podcast on there's, it's not just three it's anymore. There's like five or six. How many how, so the it's are still like the have it, find it, display it. It's still relevant today. Uh, and then it's still just kind of a concept that Walmart uses, correct? Yeah, it started with the five it's um, and then the dot com partners team and, you know, ex Walmart people add a, added a sixth it called advertise it. Uh, if you ask Sergio, he says there's seven it's called the seventh is forecast it. Um, so up for debate. But, uh, you know, I think the, the general concept, it's still in the DNA of Walmart merchants, but they don't necessarily use the five it uh, terminology. Um, it really is just a way to make sure you're covering all your bases as, as a category manager. Um, Natalie, I'm kind of curious to see, get your point of view on how the five it's formed your lens in a way with, with e-commerce. Definitely quite important from the, the Walmart end. We were, it, it depended too on the time of year. So, I mean, like for instance, at the beginning of the year, we may be really focusing on the 
optimizing the assortment and the habit and, and really focusing on, you know, what does that look like for, do we have the right products? And then working through the, the habits, the find it's display it's working through the list. It depends on what's, uh, you know, the key season and ultimately how do we best prepare for it? But the five it's six it's seven it's however many it's we want to call it. It was important to make sure that those were nailed for our key seasons when it came to the, the Walmart business and definitely continues to be top of mind for me too, as I work with my clients here at White Spider. Doing great. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, one other question, Roger, you know, um, you know, what, when SKU Ninja started, it was, it was an internal tool for the White Spider team. And so we started using it and it still is a huge uh, tool that, that we use today for the internal team for all of our services. But um, when did uh, SKU Ninja become like client facing? When did we decide that we wanted to open up this, open up the software and make it a SaaS? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So looking back, I think it was uh, kind of uh, mid 2017, really early 2018, that we finally decided, hey, let's open this thing up because the more we show these reports to our customers, you know, prior to that, um, you know, from 2016 to 2017, when we would show them the reports or even pull up the SKU Ninja tool as it existed in those early days in, in customer meetings, they wanted access to that. They they really fell in love with what we were presenting on the screen in those reports because it gave them an action plan. We threw the software and the automation that we were building behind the scenes, um, not only to tie into those APIs and that, that technical integration that Walmart would give us, but just again, from our own um, background in e-commerce and um, content best practices, we were building this automation to crawl the web and, and harvest the the good, the bad, and everything in between to present those reports. So we we had a meeting there towards the end of uh, 2017 that um, we knew there were um, some events occurring in early 2018. We wanted to make sure we were there and represented and that we started to promote SKU Ninja as this is a service that you can start, start to sign up for. But not only that, um, we really wanted to take a big look at how we offered the software. Because historically, a lot of our competitors that our customers were using, they would have these really large, long-term, high-cost contracts. And our perspective is we want to disrupt that. We recognize that not everything can be a gigantic long-term contract. We've got suppliers across the spectrum they're all trying to help make walmart.com a better e-commerce experience. And so not only by bringing that platform to the market, but just our approach to the subscription model, it really resonated with our customers so that we were flexible and affordable and giving them the functionality that they really needed. That's a really great point, Roger. Yes, it's like we are we're we're there for you to help you on anywhere you are on your e-commerce journey. We're we are we're around, we can help and we can do all sorts of different stuff. So we're very versatile. And one other thing I wanted to ask you, Roger, is um, you know, obviously SaaS platforms that have data, uh, you know, about Walmart and, and other retailers, it's nothing new. Um, but what makes SKU Ninja unique to the other uh, SaaS programs out there? Yeah, yeah, we we do look at ourselves as something pretty unique because, um, you know, one thing that comes up often is, well, who are your competitors? And that's kind of a hard question to answer because SKU Ninja and, and what White Spider offers is so unique and really touches on so many different types of offerings and industries a little bit. Um, you know, content creation is its own industry. Automated data harvesting is its own insights, analytics, content management. These are all these different things that that um, exist as separate kind of services on their own. SKU Ninja from the beginning has always been trying to bring those together into a, just a single self-service platform and really just trying to simplify the complexities of trying to achieve this. We understand not everybody that uh, not all of our customers, they have the time or uh, desire to get into the weeds of understanding these things. Everybody, you know, they're short on time and these suppliers, they want to make their buyers happy. 
while delivering great products to their customers. And so we, again, we just really wanted to simplify the complexities of navigating through the Walmart ecosystem from our perspective as a Walmart connected content partner, we're digging in behind the scenes. We've got experts here in Arkansas and really expanded across the country and world um, to help not only give you the tools, but also provide uh, a helping hand when necessary. So it's it's just really a combination of those things, just trying to simplify and be in that, that helping hand that I think really makes the Skew Ninja platform unique. That's great, Roger. Thank you so much. And now, so I wanted to talk a little bit more, you know, because Skew Ninja, it's it's past its 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 baby and even teenage years, and now it's moving into its young adult life where it's becoming a young professional. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to ask is Nat Natalie, um, how does Skew Ninja help sellers and suppliers? Because that's really why we're here. Like, why, like, how does Skew Ninja do it? Like, what are they, what does it do? And then how does it help suppliers uh, sell more on what on Walmart? a great question and can definitely go a variety of ways here, but leaning on what Roger's already said, SKU Ninja is here to help our clients solve, uh, solve their problems and let them know how they can make the most to optimize their performance on walmart.com. So thinking through this in terms of various e-commerce KPIs and what matters most, Let's first start with the, the search landscape and thinking through ultimately, where do you start? I think that's a big hurdle, knowing what are the most important keywords, what are customers searching for on walmart.com? That's a big question to, to undertake. And the great thing is with our priority keyword list functionality in Skew Ninja, we can decipher that exactly and understand what's the most relevant keywords for your catalog and therefore how can that information be used to inform strategies, whether that's from a content optimization perspective, whether that's from your, your paid search or your uh, organic perspective, keywords are gonna be where uh, our sellers and suppliers should start. And then from there, using that information to know how do I optimize my content? How do I go about navigating and improving my content quality score that we know is the bread and butter to uh, content quality at, at Walmart? And ultimately know how does it make a difference and how can I see that reflected in search performance? So I'm happy to share my screen and show some examples too of ultimately how do, I, uh, how do we apply that in practice? That would be amazing. Awesome. We see Skew Ninja in action. Yes. Uh, before I get started, can you confirm you can see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Awesome. All right. Well, first, orienting ourselves in terms of the most important keywords. Here, what I'm showing is that priority keyword list that I was describing. So we know it's a challenge to know ultimately what's the most important keyword for optimizing your, your strategy. And in SKU Ninja, there's this uh, report that outlines the most frequently searched terms per category. And so what we're seeing on screen here, this is filtered specifically to salad dressing. So if you were uh, a salad dressing shopper on walmart.com, thinking through what are the most important keywords in this space, the number one keyword that we see is ranch dressing followed by ranch, and Italian dressing. And then as we work our way down, we see other keywords as well. So this is helpful to know ultimately, where is that Walmart shopper and how can we best grab their attention by incorporating this knowledge of where customers are and therefore how they are shopping. So if let's say I'm thinking through and I'm trying to identify item level opportunities, and take my knowledge from what I know about cell addressing as a keyword, I would recommend navigating over to this Walmart search boost and gonna flip over to what that looks like. I have all this preloaded in just to make sure that my Wi-Fi doesn't glitch on me. But if let's say I'm taking a look at my current performance, I'm overwhelmed with how many opportunities I have. The great thing about the Walmart search boost is that it identifies what your current content quality score is and specifically drilling further, what are some of those item level actions that I need to take? So I can see specifically for this item, 
ultimately, what are some of those top issues that I need to tackle? And uh, what should I get started on? Taking a look here at this item specifically that has a content quality score of 73%, I do see a call out of the product title length. So what I would recommend doing is combining my knowledge of knowing how customers are searching from the priority keyword list and optimizing my product title to make sure that the most relevant, relevant keywords are in the product title itself. So those are just two ways that we can drill further into applying the content uh, quality by taking a look at keywords. Other things to keep in mind uh, in terms of thinking through some other things, I'm just gonna X out of a few windows. Uh, so how it actually matters and, and, and knowing and seeing the results. Here I've funneled down into the search snapshot report of SKU Ninja. I can actually see for the most important keywords in the salad dressing space, where, uh, where and what items are winning on each term. So knowing ultimately uh, the ranch dressing keyword is the most important keyword for salad dressing who is winning and ultimately uh, where am I? If I'm not there, then what do I need to do in order to improve my search performance? So a great way to start to really drill into what's going on from the search landscape. And then let's say I'm tasked with having to report out how we're actually doing, share a voice will be a great way to look into that. So knowing ultimately how is my seller as a seller, how am I performing from a share of voice perspective? We can see all of that information here in a nice buttoned up number and graph as we chart throughout time and what that looks like from the competitive landscape as we know how important it is to keep a pulse on the, the market and the changing dynamics that we see in the search grid. This is all really, really awesome, Natalie. Thank you so much. Um, you know, why is it important to track these, these, uh, these, these things? Like why, why do quality scores matter? Why is it important to track, you know, your share of voice? Why would, why would people need to track this and why should they be, um, interested in tracking it more closely? On the note of share of voice specifically, it's important to keep tabs on this because when we think through the, what this looks like from a a physical store perspective, it may be easier to understand. Ultimately, if we have that premium spot on a store shelf that's at eye level, likely we are, you know, we are a market leader or of utmost importance to our merchant. But from the digital landscape, it can be quite challenging to know ultimately how do we calculate this and what is what's important and where are we appearing online. Uh, we know that the 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 landscape is constantly evolving. So it's important that we are tracking where our customers are, what they're searching, and how can we better understand and ultimately deliver to our customer customers' needs by pulsing and, and understanding keyword terminology along with share of voice. And when it comes to e-commerce, this is becoming more and more important. When we think through specifically through the lens of uh, how the Walmart customer shops, we can, we know that search is the number one product finding method. So keeping tabs and understanding your share of voice is really going to move the needle as we know that this is already how customers are shopping. Therefore, even more important to increase your share of voice and your ultimate share online. That's great. And we actually started getting some questions in, and this one is really relevant to what you're talking about. So I thought I'd just go ahead and ask it early. Um, and so this is just about keywords and uh, they were under the impression that walmart.com does not like Amazon style titles where you keyword stuff. So how does Walmart deal with keywords? So keywords are still important, but it is different. And how is it different from um, Amazon? Yeah, it's a great question. And I actually can speak to this firsthand. So for Working with clients in my edge days, I worked heavily with clients in the Amazon space, and I was surprised to see how much the search terminology varies from one platform to another. So from the Amazon perspective, we may see some very specific and sophisticated search behavior 
Whereas when we think through how this looks at on Walmart, the customer isn't there yet. However, it's important to know and see what they're searching. And therefore, you know, like if they're not that advanced, they're not specifically searching the products, uh, the specific product title that we see is trending on the Amazon space. It's important to think through how this is going to, how to cater your strategy and make it applicable to Walmart as that customer isn't as advanced yet. However, we know that that customer is continuing to evolve. So keeping tabs on keywords is really important as we know you can't just copy and paste a strategy from one retailer to another. Hey, if I can just add something to that, you know, we got to keep in mind as well the, the the shoppers that are standing in the store with the app on their phone. They may not remember the brand or their specific product, but they know what they're looking for and they might not be able to find it. And so if they're thinking, you know, ranch dressing, okay, well, here's Newman's, you know, right here, let me find Newman's. If that was the first in their search results, that may help drive them to find it on the shelf right there. So just, you know, comparing Walmart to Amazon is obviously two completely different potential shopping experiences there. So there's just a lot more real world um, interaction that can occur from all the e-commerce and the PDP improvements that we're suggesting here. That's great. Thank you, Roger, Natalie. Um, one of the other things I wanted to ask and talk about is the content scores. And so why are these content scores, you know, important? How, what is a good, what is a score that they, that you wanted to see? You know, some of them, you know, in Skew Ninja, it's color coded. Obviously red was bad. Yellow was meh. Uh, where does that green come in? Because I don't think we even saw any on that, on that page. Um, so what, what is a, what is a quality score? Why is it important? And um, what is a good score? What does a good score look like? It's a great question. We know this is very, very important to the Walmart merchants. So this was something in my Walmart days, we were constantly trying to improve our Walmart or our content quality performance, thinking through the how this looks in Skew Ninja in terms of the colors and the coding. If you see green, that means that the product itself is in line with our recommendation of a content quality score at 95% or above. Anything below that will be either yellow or red. So good thing to hone in on the yellow and the red. And if we see green, likely doing quite well as you're either at or above the 95% threshold. And ultimately when thinking about content quality in the score, this is a number that is created by Walmart as a way to measure the various elements that are important to content that help to drive traffic and conversion for customers. So thinking through what's important for, say, a water bottle is going to be very different from, say, a sofa. So all of those factors will be taken into consideration to then create a content quality score. And by having a content quality score, this enables Walmart to, in, to work with suppliers to continue to make the shopping experience on walmart.com the best a possible experience it could be and make sure that we are, you know, as as a as a platform that Walmart is providing the customer with as much information that's relevant on the PDP. That's really great. And I think we we kind of talked, you talked about how ranch dressing and water bottles are totally different. Um, how do you know the difference? And does Skew Ninja, um, is, it, is Skew Ninja advanced enough to know the difference between, you know, what's important, the, what Walmart is looking for for water bottles and what Walmart is looking for for um, ranch dressing? And I'll let Natalie start and Roger, I'm sure you have stuff to add in. <laughs> This is where uh, the SQ Ninja as a platform, it's taking into consideration not only the Walmart content quality score, but also lacing in the style guide and making sure from the style guide call-outs that are coming and, and made by Walmart buyers and merchants, how ultimately, what do they want in terms of the PDPs and, and what's, what's top of mind? All of that information can be located directly in SKU Ninja, and therefore, someone who's participating and, and playing in the ranch dressing space can locate what's most relevant to them and how, you know, from a water bottle space, it's kind of like very, very different. It's all driven by the style guides. Roger, how yeah, many style absolutely. guides? How many style guides have you found? Well, you know, last I heard from somebody at Walmart that their target was approximately 6,000 style guides. 
And those style guides, as Natalie mentioned, they, you know, they really tie down to the product type. And this is a continuation of Walmart's evolution of an improved shopper experience and White Spider's connection as a partner to helping facilitate that as they, you know, the have it, find it concept started years ago, and they were just trying to get the basics. Well, Walmart's search algorithms and search grid have evolved dramatically in the last couple of years. And so they're really <clears throat> becoming more granular. They're operating more at that product type level versus just a general category or kind of department level. And so SKU Ninja is in line um, to automatically get those updates from Walmart as those product types become available, where Walmart has provided what their expectations of what great quality, uh, a great would make a great quality score for a product type of ranch versus a water bottle, whatever those different product types are. So yeah, we're working behind the scenes regularly to bring those insights into our content management platform into the Walmart Search Boost tool, so that our customers are just regularly notified, hey, there's still more work to do to get your products uh, to increase that score and, and um, make them more discoverable to shoppers. Great, thank you, Roger. And that's a great transition point. There's still more work to do. So I wanted to talk to Corey a little bit because Corey, you know, he is a product strategy and he is always thinking about what can we do next? What can we do better? Um, and so Corey, I know that we wanted to talk to you today about just kind of Walmart, uh, not Walmart, well, technically Walmart, but we wanted to talk about SKU Ninja and just kind of what are some of the more, what are some of the recent enhan en enhancement that, that we've done to SKU Ninja? SKU Ninja has literally evolved so much over the last couple of years, um, but I know that we've done a lot of really cool things just in the last few months. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what is going on that's new in SKU Ninja? Yeah, of course. So uh, one of the things that we looked at in the new year was um, how do we look at these existing tools and build enhancements uh, to make them even more valuable to our customer base, uh, as well as layering on uh, reporting and alerting functionalities. And so really what we're trying to do is uh, make sure that data, sorry, data is accessible uh, for everyone. And even if you don't have a login to uh, SKU Ninja, but your company does, uh, making it very easy for you to, to evaluate or analyze that data uh, as quickly as possible. So I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, with you guys and give you a little peek under the hood of uh, the sorts of things we're uh, doing at SKU Ninja uh, just these past couple months. So one thing that uh, we are really focused on is the alerting functionality. So don't, don't mind this customer reports just yet, we'll get to that. But this little bell icon, uh, this is actually a new feature in the UI that we rolled out uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And what we're actually allowing you to do as the customer is rather than going into the tool uh, and evaluating historical data and being more reactionary to uh, the data you are discovering with uh, SKU Ninja, instead we want you to try and uh, be able to react in near real time. So what we've done is uh, we looked at basic content, we looked at rich media uh, tools, and we figured out okay, these are probably some of the top reasons why someone would want to be notified. Uh, we are going to track those uh, metrics and dimensions. And the second it hits a threshold, we're going to send a notification uh, to the customer. Now, today, the way we are notifying people is through this notification uh, box. And if something does trigger, you'll see an icon up here uh, overlaid on top of the bell, uh, showing that you have a new uh, alert that should be addressed. Now, with basic content, it can range all the way from, uh, you know, there, there's a content uh, submission that's been completed, um, validation that the content was not just submitted through the content API with Walmart, but it is uh, published. Um, our validation process for, um, for published status uh, is to ensure that when content is submitted, that it does go live on the Walmart product page. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people here uh, deal with the annoyances of 
um, submitting title changes and they never stick. Uh, our team, uh, we track that so you don't have to be pulling up the live PVP all the time. And if we actually do find that the content was not updated, uh, we flag that as something called a merchant manual block or MMB for short. And so our team will actually go in and um, attempt to uh, push through your content in other methods uh, that we've developed uh, actually with uh, Walmart as a partner. So you may find um, a lot of difficulty in Seller Center or Item 360 submitting content. One really great thing about Skew Ninja is that if we see difficulty in submitting content through our platform, we have a team in charge of making sure your content does go live. Uh, and so when those issues are resolved, you can actually have that be a notification. So again, making sure that you are always aware of uh, the most pertinent in, uh, info regarding your Walmart business, this tool uh, will do just that. Uh, Rich Media, same idea. Uh, we have a ton of Rich Media users that uh, would like to know when they do submit uh, Rich Media, when will it go live on walmart.com? We are going to uh, provide that visibility to you. That's amazing. Thank you, Corey. I think it's just it's just uh, kind of shows how transparent that uh, Skew, Skew Ninja is being. I think it's really awesome. Um, so is it, I mean, I just kind of want to just kind of focus on that for a little bit, you know, is it, it, you know, was that always our goal is just to be as transparent as possible with our sub subscribers. Um, I kind of feel like we're even more transparent than maybe some people even at Walmart or other, um, you know, software, software, um, companies. Yeah. Yeah. You know, access is something that every brand, um, and vendor at Walmart, uh, seeks, seeks out. Uh, whether that access is directly through Retail Link, uh, Seller Center, um, any other third party, including SKU Ninja, uh, vendors just want to be aware of how their business is doing and be given the most real-time data possible so they can grow their business um, as quickly as possible. So the other thing is that Amazon has done an amazing job building a a uh, highly transparent environment for the sellers. And so when the bar has been set so high, Walmart is playing catch up in some uh, regions of data access. And so the good thing is that Walmart has been a partner with White Spider and in areas where they may be um, you know, having difficulty uh, pulling together all the data for every single vendor on walmart.com, uh, we're able to fill that gap uh, and provide access to really great data that uh, ultimately benefits uh, Walmart uh, and the brand equally. Um, so, you know, if we're able to help walmart.com while also helping out the brands, uh, that, that puts us in a pretty, pretty good spot to provide value for everyone uh, in the ecosystem. That's great, Corey. What else has Skew Ninja been putting out? Yeah, so um, something that we're really excited about and what actually has been sort of the engine in our export uh, functionality of reports. Uh, so for anyone who currently uses Skew Ninja, you would be familiar with um, all the, mostly every report in our uh, mm -hmm. system within the tools, you can export the data. And what we've ended up doing is we've taken the engine that is responsible for pulling together all the data in our uh, backend systems, and we've put it at the forefront. So this is what we're calling Customer Reports uh, V2. Uh, there is currently a Customer Reports uh, tab, but it's not with this level of, um, of functionality. And so what we're trying to do is give you this uh, frequent access to data and uh, you'll actually even be able to uh, send it to your own database uh, for further analysis if needed. So here on this page, we've got custom reports. Uh, I'm just gonna pull up this existing content health report. And what we're actually able to do is not just give you every single field in existence on SKU Ninja, because that's a lot of fields. Uh, what we actually want to try and do is give you these templates that have actually been influenced by Natalie and the client services team. 
and give you uh, information that we use uh, to grow um, our clients' uh, revenue on walmart.com. So we're not necessarily uh, just giving you this blank canvas, but it's to, uh, to your benefit. So you don't have to be sifting through all the noise. Instead, you're getting the information that we believe um, will have the highest impact on your business. So I'll go through this real quickly. Uh, if anyone is already in SKU Ninja, uh, this uh, page uh, will be rolled out in the next week or two. So uh, if you're looking for it, it's it's not there just yet, but uh, you can use this as a guide uh, once you are uh, fully um, given access to this page. So what you need to do is uh, you fill in the report name and this schedule piece is super useful for um, anyone who just wants to have a pulse on their Walmart business, uh, we can schedule this to be sent out daily. It can also be sent out on a weekly basis. Uh, so for daily, we will run the report around 5 a.m. every day and have it sent to you uh, either through email uh, or webhook. And then weekly, uh, we can have that sent out on, I believe, every Monday morning is when we're running it. Roger, is that true? It's every Monday morning? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, awesome. So if, you know, every Monday morning you get into the office, you want to know, like, what's my content health score across my entire assortment? This is the kind of report uh, that would be hugely helpful uh, for your business. So if we switch it to weekly, uh, we go down here, and this is the templates uh, I was telling you about. So rather than giving you all of these fields and just letting you pick and choose whatever you want. Instead, we're going to guide you down that path of making sure you're given the information uh, that we believe is the most actionable. So content health is just one of uh, the several we have available today, but we'll have things like search rank. Uh, if you have a set of keywords that are being crawled by SKU Ninja, uh, we can actually give you a CSV report uh, with every single keyword, uh, every single item, or, or the rank of your items on those keywords um, and provide that over a timeline. So again, this is stuff that's already available in SKU Ninja through our tools, but if you want to slice and dice it a bit differently, this is the kind of uh, environment you would um, really thrive in getting access to. So if I just do the content health, I can also add filters. So if you are an account that has multiple uh, brands or multiple clients if you're an agency. What you'll actually be able to do now is you don't need to click into every single brand and then export the content health and then combine it all in Excel. What you'll actually be able to do is go here, you can select accounts. And because I have access to every single account, it's massive. But if you've only been given access to five or six accounts, you'll see that in the dropdown. You can multi-select these accounts. And once you add that as a filter, you'll be able to run it. And if this is on weekly, you'll get every single account with all of their items and all of their content health scores in a single CSV file. Now, it's not just content health in this uh, report. As you can see, we've got all these other fields here for you. Um, you can either have it all selected, you can deselect all of them, and then select just item ID, UPC, brand, and then quality score. And that's those are the only fields that would be included in that CSV uh, report. The last piece here is uh, recipients. So if you want to do email, you can do that. If you want to do system alerts, which is the my alerts uh, piece. So if it runs, it's all, all it's going to do is just uh, notify you in the bell icon that a new report is available. So if you don't want it in your email, you can uh, stay away from uh, uh, blowing up your inbox. Instead, just house it inside of SKU Ninja. The last piece is Webhook. So this is more of a developer uh, related tool where if you have an in-house uh, engineering team, you can ask them for this URL that we would then put into uh, this notification box. So the idea is that once this report runs, we would send that file to this webhook URL, and then your engineering team should know what to do with it at that point. 
uh, they receive it, they'll house it in uh, your data lake environment, whether that's uh, in the cloud or stored locally. And then you can pull it up in any uh, in-house data visualization tools uh, that you're looking at. So really cool way of leveraging the data you have access to in SKU Ninja, but using it in a, in a more native environment that maybe combines other data points that we don't uh, have access to. Now, if I go back up to email, uh, what's great is it's not just a single email. Uh, you'll actually be able to have it all comma separated. So if you wanna send it out to five or six other people, you can do just that. So don't feel like you're limited in uh, just providing one email here. Uh, I encourage you to get this information out to um, whoever on your team uh, needs access to it. So I would just go in here, add my email. And then once I have that filled out, I can just save changes. So I've switched this to a weekly schedule, but before I uh, actually switched it, I ran this report. And the last thing here is, let's just say you pulled the report, uh, but you had it running on a daily or weekly basis before then. What we actually do is we save the last 30 days of reports that were generated by, uh, in this case, the content health report. And so if you ever want to see the historical data, you'll see it right here. Um, and then if you want to download and compare the differences between uh, the reports, let's just say your content health was going up and to the right, uh, you can download this data to get the historical uh, information. And all you do is just click download and it'll just be a CSV file here, uh, right, right there for you. So uh, again, this is information that's already available to you in, in the uh, SKU Ninja tools, but all we're doing is um, having it a bit more flexible for your needs. Um, the last thing I'll say is we are always adding new templates. And if you have an idea of uh, fields that you would love to combine and see over, you know, a, a, a date of, in time, then we can actually uh, customize that template just for you. Uh, and if we find that it's useful for everyone on SKU Ninja, we can make that available uh, to every account uh, that's logged in. So that's custom reports for you. Uh, any questions on that or Brooke, any observations on, on sort of how this is um, an innovative tool for, for all the users on, on SKU Ninja? No, this is, this is really great, Corey. We are uh, super excited where we always like making things easier and more transparent and just uh, more flexible. We, uh, you know, like Roger said in the beginning, we want to help save time. And uh, so, cause saving time is saving money and time is one of those things we won't get more of. So uh, we're, that is one of the main things that one of our goals here at White Spider and SKU Ninja is to make sure that we're making everything a lot easier for people to get the information they need. And so this is, this is perfect, Corey. Um, I did want to go into some of the questions. So we've been getting a lot of questions. Um, one of the first questions that we got was, uh, what does the average walmart.com shopper look like versus the average Amazon shopper? So that's to the floor. Everyone wants to take that one first. I feel like that's a Natalie uh, question since you were all, all right. on the search side. It's a really great question and it really depends on the category. But if we're starting more so at a, a high level, we see that the Walmart customer is first a grocery customer and then uh, finding the rest of their items for their grocery experience online. Whereas at Amazon, you're finding that customer is looking for anything and everything they possibly could want and ordering it. So it really depends ultimately like for how we would look at a, a customer in the furniture space. They're going to look very different on Walmart versus Amazon. It's gonna look different per category, but note at a high level, we notice that the Walmart customer has a very grocery first mindset. And then uh, whereas Amazon is looking for anything and everything they possibly need. That's awesome. Um, another one of the questions that came in, which is uh, something that we always love talking about, is what support and training is available in SKU Ninja? So you can't have a SaaS without educating everybody how it works. So uh, Corey, Corey or Roger, what um, what kind of training and um, support do does SKU Ninja have? 
Yeah, so one thing that we have in the UI um, is this little question mark. Uh, so what you can do if you're ever lost or you feel like um, you know you're you're not able to access the kind of data um, you're hoping to access, you can always ask a question here. And our team, uh, we're internally we're we're famous uh, on talking about how quickly we get back to customers. Um, at, at some points, we've gotten it down to seven minute uh, response time. So uh, if it's during the workday, our team is, is really amazing uh, with customer service. Uh, the other piece that you have access to is our um, knowledge base. So I will say that we are updating this right now. Uh, we have someone dedicated to uh, revamping all the documentation on how to use SKU Ninja. Uh, he'll also be creating videos that would live on the UI of all these tools. So uh, if you ever want to learn more, uh, it won't just be this drop down of text, but it will also be a video that would walk you through the tools functionality. So that's that's how I would approach um, you know exploring and learning more about Skew Ninja. Now, when it comes to the whole Walmart world. Uh, we have, I think, Natalie, what is it, like 11 ex-Walmart folks working at SKU and uh, White Spider? Yeah, I believe we're up to 11 now and counting. Oh. <laughs> I think it's That's closer amazing. to 15. I think we... Oh, gosh. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I the the expertise, the, the thought leadership we have in-house um, really is uh, unlike anything else. And so if you feel like you need that um, extra training, that better understanding of how does walmart.com work, uh, we're more than happy to um, schedule some, you know, consulting hours with you, uh, talk through um, best practices and try and set your team up for success uh, in the new year. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out and learn more about um, the sorts of trainings that we do uh, for, for Walmart brands. Another question that came in is, um, is all of the information in SKU Ninja, is it, can, can you get, can you get that same information in Seller Center? Is there information that's in SKU Ninja that's not available like in Seller Center or item 360? Yeah. So a lot of the search data, um, th that's actually all done in-house by us. So, um, we, we assist in the, uh, creation of, uh, what we call prioritized keyword lists. Um, and so what we're doing is uh, we're, we're coming up with a list of keywords that we believe are unique to the walmart.com uh, uh, search algorithm. And then we're scraping those keywords um, in some cases on an hourly basis. And so we take all that data and we put it into uh, one of our tools called Share a Voice. Uh, we use it in many other tools, but Share a Voice is a great example of that. And we're showing you where uh, your items are ranking uh, in, in the top search keywords on walmart.com. Uh, Seller Center and Item360 don't provide that level of granularity. Uh, part of the reason is because uh, Walmart's not um, uh, cataloging uh, the search result on an hourly basis, whereas we are. Uh, so from an analytics perspective, we do provide a lot of really amazing um, information that otherwise would not be available uh, in Walmart tools. All right, thank you. And we have one last question, which I think is gonna be, uh, is, 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 a, is a good one to end on, but how do you sign up? How do you sign up for SKU Ninja? How do you like, I want this, how do I do it? So um, you will you can just head on over to uh, whitespider.com, uh, whitespider with Y's, not I's. Uh, and you'll be able to learn more about the uh, types of subscriptions that are available. Uh, we have something as affordable as five bucks a month for rich media. Um, and then it goes up from there. Uh, and some, in some cases uh, includes those consulting hours um, that you might be interested in. So, you know, we have 24, 23 live products right now in SKU Ninja, and they all do very unique things and provide value to uh, businesses that are just getting started on Walmart Marketplace, all the way up to uh, the Fortune 100 companies that work with Walmart in stores. So the tool is very flexible and can meet your needs. Uh, so just head on over to whitespire.com and you can uh, explore some more. 
Yep, you can order right there. You can fill out the contact us and I will get the email personally and make sure that, you know, maybe Corey or Natalie or, uh, you know, the sales team gets it. And so we will definitely be um, able to reach out and help you. But thank you guys again. Uh, this has been a really great webinar. It's uh, our last webinar of 2022, if you believe it or not. Uh, so we won't be back uh, within the webinar space until 2023, but we were coming back in January uh, with a webinar with Bizarre Voice. And so that's going to be a really fun one. So stay tuned for that and uh guys thank you guys so much and it's been a joy and i hope everybody has a happy holidays thank you appreciate bye. it bye bye, bye.